Hey, this is Dan from bodybuilderinthailand.com. What I was doing before I came to Thailand. I bet some of you guys are curious. So, obviously now I make my income from you know, doing the online thing. Uh, but it wasn't always like that. And I'm gonna explain how I got to that point uh, from when I was living in the US. So, uh, the first thing was that I worked some jobs that were like normal jobs uh, when I was like in high school and when I was in community college before I went to University of California. Um, I worked at Hollister folding the clothes, you know, Hollister clothing, got a lot of girls. <laughs> and then uh, I worked at In-N-Out Burger later and got a repetitive motion injury that really fucked me up and, and really made me lose all my gains because uh, I wasn't able to exercise at all for one year. Because uh, the potato machine, repetitive motion. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and so then I went to university, right? And I mean, one of the things was, and that a lot of you guys, I'm sure that you can relate to this, is that you're in college and they're like, you know, what do I want my major to be? Or, or uh, you know, what do I want to, what am I interested in? And usually for most people who are in college, there's some people that are not like this and they know exactly the career that they want and they go to college and they're like on the path. They're on the path of their career. That's what they're doing in college. But a huge, I would say a majority of people that are in college don't know or have really any idea what they want to do for a career. They're, they're there because that's the thing to do. It's the right thing to do to go to college. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Woo! College graduate! So that that's the... It's, it's expected at this point. And, and I mean, that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of, you know, college graduates these days that are without jobs because where it used to be high school is what is expected. Now it's college that's what's expected. You know, you, you're, if you don't have a university degree, it's like, what the fuck? Uh, which, I mean, so I have a psychology bachelor's degree, okay? But I don't use that degree to validate or obtain any kind of job, and if I did, it would be a shit job, you know. Uh, what I, what I, but I do use my degree because I use it um, like social psychology. I, I use it; it helps me with marketing, uh, with even with bodybuilder in Thailand and stuff. So that was uh, that. That was what I did. I started studying um, psychology. I knew I was interested in the psychology, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And you know, what every time that I would think, uh, okay, you know, maybe I want to do this career and, uh, you know, I wanted to be like a, a therapist, like a marriage and family therapist at first. And I was doing really good when I did have that goal. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a marriage and family therapist. And, and I actually did really good, you know, and I was, you know, scoring some of the, the top test scores in my classes because I was really paying attention, uh, in, in college at that point. But then after a while I started, you know, becoming disillusioned with it. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to be dealing with people's problems? And I'm like, you don't even make that much money. You got to sit in an office. You got to get like the stupid master's degree. It's like every degree is costing you like, you know, at least $30,000, you know? And it's like, you know, like the bachelor's degree, you know, costs like at least 30,000. The, you know, the master's, you know, another 50,000 and a PhD, another 50,000. And then you got to go work for somebody and do a uh, residency, like work for them for free, you know, um, for, for one year. And then you get your practice and then the average salary is like 50 to 60,000 a year, right? <laughs> I'm just like, Jesus, man, this is, this is shit. And th there's, a, there's an emphasis on higher education though. Also, ever, ever since uh, I graduated and I've, you know, look on Facebook, there's a lot of people still that are, uh, they, they look lost to me actually, because, because they, they, uh, they graduated from university with, at the same time as me or similar time to me. And it was like, yeah, congratulations, right? But now they're like doing these master's programs or PhD programs, but I don't see them talking about like what the end goal is. I just see them like doing these and you know, every year or two, there's another new congratulations graduate picture up. Great, you know, pursue higher education. That, that's good. But um, you know, one thing is that as far as money goes, whenever you trade your time for money, you're not getting a good investment. Uh, like it's not a good return on investment. Uh, when you are able to s sell a product, 
you can sell as much of that product as you want. And you can keep, you know, the, the rate at which your work is producing income, it's like performance based rather than, you know, with a job where you're sp you're trading your time for money. You know, I go to this job and I get paid this salary or I go to this job and I get paid this much per hour. Those jobs are completely ceilinged. And I mean, yeah, you can get a raise, you can get a raise, right? But you're not being paid based on, you know, your performance and you're not really that much in control. So a lot of times when you're pursuing the, the normal path, which most people pursue the normal path, that's okay. And that's good because most people need to, most people are normal people. Uh, they, they're going to, they're basically going to college, you know, getting degrees so that they can have validation so that they'll be hired for jobs by bosses who value those degrees as being, okay, you know, they need these degrees and then we will consider them, right? And then we will consider paying them for their time, trade, allowing them to trade their time for our money. And then those same bosses want to get a really good deal on you too, right? Because you're a commodity. That's why people outsource to other countries where the work is and labor is cheaper. How, what is the littlest amount of money that we can pay this person to get their skills and qualifications? All right, so you don't really, ideally, when you're thinking about money and, and getting it, you know, being financially secure, ideally you don't wanna be in that situation. But obviously a lot of people do do that situation and you know, turn out great, um, you know, turn out being very financially secure but I think that we can all agree that ideally it's better to do it not like that. Uh, so anyways, I, st I started getting a lot of anxiety because you know my senior year came around in university and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I was gonna get my degree, but you know, I have the same thoughts. You know, I'm like, well, what the hell? You know, I was scared to leave school, be a student. You're protected as a student. It's a sanctuary being protected as a student in school. You have that student life set up for you going to classes, uh, you have the social system and everything. Uh, and, you know, I, I was like thinking like it's scary. It was scary to me to think of leaving that and entering the the workforce and becoming a drone. I, I, I really have a problem uh, myself with uh, doing anything if I don't feel like it is uh, serving some kind of higher purpose, right? Or striving towards achieving something. Just like trading my time, like, like the, the job at Hollister and the job at In-N-Out Burger, those jobs like really bothered me like deeply psychologically because I was there and, and I was, you know, like, like working for money, which, you know, that was the reason I was there. I wanted money, uh, but I really felt like I didn't exist. Like it was more just like a shell of me or a robot right or some kind of uh i felt very mechanical and i did not feel like i was able to do anything that really improved where i was or who i am as a person built any skills that would be lasting with me uh, i felt very alienated um from my identity felt alienated from my identity didn't feel like i was being who i was so it was very bothering to me and uh caused me a lot of anxiety when I was in my senior year of college and I'm like, yo, you know, so what's going on now? You know, like, what am I going to do? And so, you know, I think a lot of other people think that way too. And that's why they go into the master's degree programs, the PhD programs, and they still don't really know like what they want their career to do. It's kind of like, just keep going. Like, cause you don't know, like, you know, or maybe they get their bachelor's degree and they find out, well, you know, there's no job opportunities for this uh, bachelor's degree unless you get the master's degree or the PhD. Uh, you know, like literally you will not be able to work in the field of your degree, of a bachelor's degree, and a lot of these degrees, unless you keep on going and get a master's degree or PhD. Otherwise, you're just going to have a bachelor's degree like in psychology and then be a manager of a clothing store or something. <laughs> so, so that's no fun, right? And so these people, you know, they still don't even really know what they want to do, but they keep on going and doing more school, right? And that's, again, not everyone, guys. It's just, it's just I know it is some people, though. Anyways, back to me and what I was doing before I came to Thailand is yeah so i what was having anxiety and i started like looking uh online you know i knew that you could make money online so there's this website called afalongabroad.com afarangabroad.com and that was the first time that i was exposed to you can leave your country and you can live somewhere else and you can make money on the internet 
So I know this guy now. We actually became friends here in Thailand uh, because he lives in Bangkok, and so do I. Uh, but I actually discovered him and his website back in two, 2010, and it was on the bodybuilding.com MISC forums. He was doing marketing on there to advertise that, you know, what he was doing in his website. And, and that really had a huge psychological impact on me seeing this because I had had fantasies growing up of leaving my home country and going to live somewhere else. And actually, when I was around 21, 22 years old, I'd even told my parents, you know, yeah, you know, once I, uh, you know, once I get stable, I'm, I'm leaving America. I'm going to go live in South America or something, uh, you know, sayonara. Uh, and and, and they're like, huh? And, and basically just like, like, yeah, right. Right. So, but, but I was, I was serious that, uh, I, I liked the aspect of going to somewhere where, uh, my currency, uh, was more valuable. And, and I like the idea of taking advantages, um, in, in life, being, putting yourself in the, in advantageous situations so that you can be more likely to be most successful. And it appealed to me to, uh, do it because of that reason and then also just exploring and I really like um, meeting new cultures and learning about them and things like that anyways though so that that was what planted the seed in my mind of alongabroad.com and I knew that he made his money from his website and, and but I just couldn't understand how and, and and eventually I learned I learned more and um, actually from uh, goodlookingloser.com I learned more how to like really like you know actually do it and, and go about it and then after I you know got established and started uh, you know making my income from my online stuff then on bodybuilder in thailand.com I have a section now on there called uh, how to make money online and that is all talking about exactly how I do what I do how I make my income how I live here everything right um, how I make money online and so I took basically from those different sources that I had where I like learned how to do it myself and but still had to like put things together and then in bodybuilder in thailand.com on the how to make money online section I like just you know like with all my experience put together it like uh, more more sit more just simple like I'm sure that you guys know from some of my videos the way that I put things uh, how I how I speak about things it can make things that are complicated be a lot more simple and so that that's kind of what I did because I wanted to honestly I wanted to give back a little bit that that was a, that was a little bit of why I wrote that you know, I know that people are interested they're like what the fuck how do you make money online that's how I used to be and the, really when I decided I decided uh, a few months before graduation actually that I was gonna start you know making uh, I was gonna make a website and I was gonna I was gonna start you know, trying to make money online. And so what I did was I went to the bookstore, I went to Barnes and Noble, and I sat there and I read uh, The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss from front to back, from cover to cover. I didn't buy the book. <laughs> I should have, but I didn't. Uh, I just sat there in Barnes and Noble and I read it. And that uh, was another, it didn't tell me, you know, what to do. I still had to come up with my own ideas. And, and I mean, even me, I can't tell you what to do, uh, but I can come pretty close. And uh, anyways, I had to still make up my own idea, but it sort of made things uh, more clear to me. So all these different uh, sources made things more clear to me. Hey, this is, um, you know, give me the ideas and the tools to work with so that I could start making my uh, income online. So then before coming to Thailand, I worked for a protein bar company and I was actually selling protein bars in Costco, but I was making a lot of money doing it. Okay. <laughs> so there was a uh, there's this oatmeal protein whey protein bar brand right and so I was in there in Costco selling these things and I was you know cutting up samples but also you know I've I pretty big muscles you know like I'm a pretty uh, like uh, I got the I look the part and so when the the mothers of the kids and everything would be coming through Costco you know I'd be cutting up free samples and I'd be giving to them and be like hey you know this is, this is good nutrition for your kids yeah, you know uh, put this in your basket <laughs> I've been selling them a, a 12 pack of these protein bars and uh, basic, basically I would I would usually sell like between like four and five hundred um, 12 packs of these protein bars per day and each week I was making um, you know like maybe between a thousand to a thousand three hundred dollars or something like that selling protein bars in Costco so that was great that was great and that really uh, boosted my finances so that I was able to you know buy a plane ticket to come to Thailand and you know have some money saved up and things like that 
And during that time, I also met um, one of my best friends back in America, America, Grace Nguyen. She's from Vietnam. And so she had come over to Vietnam, or from Vietnam to live her dream in America, uh, where I was, you know, leaving America to live my dream in Asia. And so we actually were both working for this protein bar company. And it really, uh, it, we really had a, a quick connect. And it was nothing like romantic at all like that. It was just, it was completely uh, friendship, but we really had a good like mental connection and we really were able to help each other. And she, I was very interested, you know, in, in what she was doing. She had traveled through Thailand. She had traveled through all of Asia. She used to work for the, the Hyatt hotels and had tons of information for me about, you know, Asian culture and Southeast Asian culture. Uh, so that was one of the things that actually really, you know, pushed me, you know, even more to like buy the plane ticket and then get on the plane and go. But that's one of the things though, is that once you buy the plane ticket, you're basically just waiting for the airplane to, uh, you know, for takeoff date and you just go and you get on and you're gone. So that, that was, uh, that was a deal with that. And, uh, definitely, you know, I dated a few Vietnamese girls, I had a couple of Vietnamese girlfriends, uh, that, you know, I've loved very much and really fell in love with their sweet, uh, sweet personalities and a uh, way of taking care of me. Uh, before before that and then the last bit that I did was was I made that Vietnamese friend Grace who that was platonic and that was more where I really learned some more core uh, some more core stuff about the the culture of Southeast Asia anyways okay and so then I you know um, November two years ago November two years ago I uh, got on the plane from San Francisco and I came to Thailand. I took a 24 hour flight and you know, I've been here ever since. All right, follow your dreams. This is Dan from bodybuildingthailand.com.